All right. Uh, yep, yeah, looks like we got sound from the mic. We're on the right mic there. Maybe a little bit on the right mic in here. Yeah, it says it is. Change this up. I had this at a little bit of a different angle the other day for something else I was recording. Uh, hey, Johnny, how's it going? Let's um, shuffle the chats around here, and then I think we are ready to get going. And also, I guess, let me... Uh, oh, you know what I didn't do? Actually, one second. Let me... Um, hey, Dexter, how's it going? Uh, let me also show this, right? I think I can show this. There's nothing here. Uh, so I, I've been going to YouTube when I start up. Actually, I have a blurb that I usually p paste into here. I should rewrite it, though, honestly. It's out of date. Um should add to it. Oh, it looks like I've opened too many files this week. Uh, I don't know exactly where it's at, because it's usually in the recent list. I usually don't have to uh, look around for it. it is. Uh, I've been trying to do this on YouTube each time, and then I save this, and then I also have been disabling the chat, which is in here. Anybody knows a way to disable the chat by default for new streams? Like, whenever I start up a new one, this box is checked again, and I have to come and check it? Anybody knows how to make that the default? That would be awesome. Um, okay. Let's close this, and let's do quick introduction. Seems you forgot to... Yep. Yep. Uh, oh, I can make Johnny... Um, yeah, I'm totally up for that. I don't know how to do that either. Uh, well, okay, I can hear myself. Uh, well, it's disabled now. I wonder, is that in the same menu? I'll check for it real quick here. If it's not here... Um, yeah, I'll look into it. Message delay, participant modes. Yeah, I don't know where to set up, but I'm totally down for that. Uh, Johnny, if you're willing to do that for me, then I will definitely uh, figure out how to get you moderator access, at least for my YouTube, and then um, we'll leave the chat on. We'll start leaving the chat on again. Um, I can try to figure out how to pull it into the screen as well, if we want to show it up there. But yeah, that was the uh, the thing, is we were getting those weird, weird links in there sometimes. Uh, so let me do a quick introduction. Hello to everybody who might be new. Uh, my name is Tim. I go by Foamy Guy on um, GitHub and Discord online uh, and Twitch as well. Although on Twitch it's Foamy Guy Twitch. Um, and in the stream I'll be working on Circuit Python related things. If you are new to all of this um, and you don't know what Circuit Python is, this is a good place to get started. CircuitPython.org. This is basically a version of Python that runs on these tiny computers. There's a bunch of them in the backgrounds of these photos here. Uh, I also have this one loaded up, uh, which happens to be a Pi Portal device. So on the back here, uh, basically there is a, you know, pretty much a whole computer inside this little chip here. And this one also happens to have this secondary chip over here, which is a ESP32, which is allowing it, uh, it talks back and forth between the main chip and this chip, and this allows it access to the internet uh, via Wi-Fi. And so, uh, again, we're running Python code on these devices. When you plug them into your computer, they just show up as a thumb drive. So I have this um, drive right here, which I have open in PyCharm. Uh, but you can open it in, you know, just File Explorer or your IDE of choice, whatever you want. We have the CircuitPy drive, and this is actually um, that device. So when I plug this device in, it gives me that drive. I go on the drive, I edit the file that's called code.py, and then as soon as we save it, the microcontroller will run the new version of code that's in this file. Um, so that is what CircuitPython is all about. 
Um, that's what we'll be working on. If you, let me scoot this over. Oops. If you uh, want to learn more, again, circuitpython.org is a good place to start. You can also join us on Discord. Uh, that's what the chat that's showing on the screen there is. Uh, and the Adafruit Discord, if you go to adafru.it slash Discord, you can join us there. Um, the particular chat is the live broadcast chat. Is it actually showing? Maybe it's not showing. It's not showing. Where did the chat go? Did I just close it? I did, didn't I? Yeah, I just closed it. Okay, let's put the chat back. Uh, that should be the chat that's showing. Discord. Here, one second. Let's do this over here. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah. Alrighty. Whoop. That's gonna make it weird. Okay. Should be back now. Yeah, I guess. Oh, it's cut off a little bit. Let me uh, just tweak the size here. Get a look at it there. There we go. Oh, nope. There we go. Let's get the mic microphone just a tad out of the frame there. Uh, okay. Ow. Again, put this back. Don't close it. This back, we can turn the preview off. Go back to Twitch chat here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, circuitpython.org, that's where you can learn more about it. Uh, if you're interested in getting involved, there's a contributing link up here. Uh, if you want to get involved with the development, which is kind of what this stream will be about, um, you can click that, find all the open uh, pull requests and open issues, uh, which open PRs, that's what I'm taking a look at today. Um, so this is how you can get going. Again, you can join us on the Discord too if you need help with anything. And I will also mention uh, CircuitPython, it's an open source project, but it is primarily funded by this company right here, uh, Adafruit. This is their website, adafruit.com. Um, so they are paying the folks who are working full-time on the project. They're paying folks who are working part-time on the project, like myself. Um, and so if you want to help support the project but not really get involved in development, you can uh, you know, head here to adafruit.com and purchase hardware from them. Um, since they are paying to keep everything running. Uh, this Pi Portal device, which I'm using today, they have these things, Pi Portal. This is one of the ones that I like to use quite a bit because I'm into uh, doing stuff on the screen a lot. And this one has a nice, you know, relatively big screen on the front there. It has a touch overlay as well. So you do interactive applications with it. catch up on the chat here as well. Trying to get in the stream part of the unzip working still. Ooh, uh, nice. Won't be around much. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, use the lib decompress for those that didn't catch any of the, the previous streams where it came up. Mark is working on um, giving us the ability to basically unzip gzipped data from CircuitPython core. Um, and then we need that because we found a, an API that we want to pull data from where the data comes back to us as gzip. So this will give us the ability to undo it. So looks like uh, Mark got compress working or decompress rather, uh, but the stream is uh, the stream is being a little bit more of a, a challenge. Let's see here. Got a GitHub issue for MagTag sensor example. Got to actually post the working code. I was complaining it didn't look like on the Adafruit side. Was I like, I'm on Adafruit. Find yourself in the blog eventually. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that's always cool to uh, to see stuff that you made kind of get get covered out there in different places. Um, all right. So the specific PR I'm starting with today is this one in the Turtle library. Turtle. Uh, I don't know. Is there like a high level video or anything? Not really. Uh, turtle, um, I don't know where the name came from. I guess there might have been a turtle on the on the cursor. Turtle graphics. 
This is probably longer than we need, but surely they'll show an example of it. Let's see. Um, okay, here we go. Turtle graphics is this kind of thing that this person happens to be doing in this video here, where basically you have a cursor and you give it like a direction and you tell it to move in that direction and you set a color. Uh, and you can kind of think of it as, imagine you're like, you have a pen and you're putting the pen down and then moving it around to draw. And you can lift the pen up if you want to move without drawing uh, and you can change colors. And you can also, in this case, uh, in CircuitPython, you can also stamp uh, bitmap images. Um, so that is what this library is about. And then this PR specifically was updating the library to use uh, some of the newer stuff with CircuitPython 7, which was like the way you set up the on-disk bitmap, uh, which are used in the stamps. And so I ran this actually a while back and got at the time, what I thought were odd results, well, it, I guess we had two things. We had some that I thought were odd results, and then we had some that uh, I still think are odd results. But back when I tested this before, I think that I believed that this one was not behaving as intended. Uh, but looking through the code a little bit more this morning, I think this actually might have been behaving as intended. Um, this one, though, was really weird. I don't know. The, and, and this would have been the same code that drew these two things. So, like, you can see this one, it got the blue lines from the pin. And this one, um, it doesn't have blue lines. And instead, it did this. It, like, filled in the graphic everywhere where there would have been a line. Um, I don't know how to describe that quite all the way, but you can see what's what it did there. Um, and so this was back then, a couple of months back. Uh, this actually fell through the cracks a bit for me. I forgot to come back to this. Um, and so I'm taking a look back into it today and we have different behavior now. Uh, and I guess actually I changed it a little bit. Um, let me undo what I did real fast and then I'll show you where we're at now. We're actually at the place, same state as that first photo. I actually made this change today before I got on the stream. I'll save this. What we'll see is we're back to basically how it looked in the first image, uh, which is we got the first stamp in the middle, we got the blue lines drawn over the top. Um, the cursor is our image. And we got six stamps on some of the points of this star. We got three down here, we got three down up here. And then the last one there is the cursor. So the cursor stays there and makes it look like seven. Turtle came from the programming language logo. Okay. Um, yeah, it's used a lot of times. It's like a, it's a good way to teach folks how to code because you can um, really visually see things like for loops and if statements and stuff. Like if you have a, a for loop, which is what backs this code here, you know, you can make it draw a star without having to know too much geometry really you could just kind of tell it to go and then turn and then go and then turn um, so the code here should have a for loop i think yeah oh no well okay it's a while true in this case but it does uh break eventually which makes it sort of a for loop um so it's it's used a lot to teach folks who are learning to code uh, from what I understand. It's also fun just to make graphics. We used this back on the Etch-a-Sketch project as well. So it turns out the way it works is pretty similar to how an Etch-a-Sketch works. Um, and so I think this actually was the intended behavior, but back then we got this on 630 and on 700 Alpha 4 we got this, um, which was weirder. Oh, you know what? I did make actually one other change. Let me, uh, let me swap back the one other change I did. So the other thing I did was uh, this pixel shader. Yeah. So we had this we had this code before, which was like set up the pixel shader this way, and then we had this comment there that was like after we're done supporting. Um, 
Circuit Python six or whatever it says, yeah, six. Then you know, come back and change this out with this thing. And so this way actually does still seem broken, but it might be this way. Okay, well I thought it seemed broken earlier. Actually it does look fine to me now though, right? This looks how it should. Hmm. This is definitely on the device. Weird, yeah, I don't know. I wasn't on the stream yet, so nobody else would have seen this, but I thought I ran this like this before and I'm I thought I got a different result. I don't know, must be must be misremembering, or I had something else different still as well. I don't know. Worked in an observatory that used it for telescope positioning. We're adopting fourth. Wow, that's pretty cool. Telescope positioning. Yeah, that's uh, that's fascinating. Honestly, there's probably so many interesting like. I'm fascinated by the the different ways that people input their intention into different systems. Uh, I never would have thought about like how they would position a telescope before, but that totally makes sense to get like, you know, exact movements, you know, tell it to go point in one spot um, over and over again to update, depending on what you're looking at. Um, I don't know what I saw before, but it seems like we're actually fine now. I do think, though, we can go ahead and do two things. Um, we're, not, we're not really supporting CP6 anymore. I mean, it's not like you're on your own out of luck. We won't help you with it. Probably will suggest that you upgrade to CP7. Um, so, you know, it's not that it's not exactly supported, but I think we're okay now removing fallback code that's meant for CircuitPython 6. We have a stable release of seven, uh, and we're working on a stable release of seven two or something, right? We just had a beta or an alpha. In fact, let's go here. We might as well update the Pi Portal too, because I have no idea what I'm on. So yeah, we have stable seven one one. So we've had two stable releases of seven, uh, and then we're also on RC zero of seven two. So we're close to having a seven two stable. So I think we've had plenty of time for folks to get updated. Let's download this and this. And so I guess to start with, let me actually just go back. Whoops. Let me go back to um, exactly how it was in this PR. Roll back all of my changes. That gets us back to how we were. In the PR, I'm going to take this and copy it to here. And then I'm going to update my Pi Portal using those two uh, F2s, one at a time, obviously. but. All right, 711, which I've downloaded at least three times. I wonder if I could make a browser add-on that would like, whenever I'm about to download a CircuitPython UF2, it will check my downloads folder to see if that exact one exists. And if it does, then it will just like, like file touch it or whatever, so that it will uh, count as modified and jump to the top of the list. That would be interesting. I don't know if the browser might not be able to see that much stuff on the hard drive though. Um, okay, so it's looking like we're getting the same thing there on 7.1.1, so that's a good sign. Uh, and I'll talk about why, why are there only six of these, right? Or seven if you count this one, or I guess eight if you count the center one. Um, that's another thing I think we can update, but first I want to test it just how it is. And it seems fine, actually. So the other thing I'll do, actually, let me go to the camera. We'll do the, uh, RC so that we can see what we're going to be doing on 720 and it drops.
A small two-wheeled robot. Oh, that would be fun, too, to control a robot. All right. That's looking, looking the same. Okay. So, yeah, maybe we're good on... The PR as it is, but I do think we can follow it up maybe with another PR, which I'll create today. We can um, go ahead and do this. Just swap into the new pixel shader. And the other thing we can do is I noticed when I ran this. Let's see, where's my TO? I noticed when I ran this that it's printing this over and over. Add on group full, add on group full. And I searched in the code and figured out where that's coming from. Whoops. Add on. Add on group full. So this was doing some checking, and there's actually a comment here that explains the rationale. We used to have the restriction max size in display.io group, but we no longer do. We can just uh, add more and more things. Uh, eventually we'll run out of memory if you add too many, but there's not like a hard cap. It used to be you set the amount when you initialize it, and then you could never go over that. Uh, but now we can add more. Oh, nice. There's a, a photo of the robot. That's pretty sweet looking. But, uh, it's got a pie badge on the top there even. Look at that. Motor driver. It's like batteries in the middle there. It's like a multi-layer cake. <laughs> That's awesome. How do you give it the... Um, how do you input to it? Is it like have a uh, remote control receiver or something? I guess actually there's a battery here as well. Maybe this thing isn't a battery. Maybe there's batteries for different components. Yeah, I guess maybe if there's batteries in here... I mean, there must be, right? It's black and red. So if there's batteries in here, maybe these are the primary batteries powering the, the motor. But then this maybe is just powering the Pi badge, would be my guess. So I do think there's a plug on the back of the Pi badge there. Yeah, for real. That's, that's a super cool robot. But uh, must be a feather... Feather motor wing, maybe, because the Pi badge has a feather stamp on the back. Pre-stored, okay, I gotcha. You save it in there with instructions, and then it will uh, it will go through them when it turns on and runs. Neat. It's cool. Thanks for sharing. Oh, you know what I want to... This is a rabbit hole. Maybe we'll get into this a little later. Dexter, I saw the other day you posted the, uh, the, um, it looked like it was using, was it Vector.io to make, um, basically mocked LEDs, and then you could pass it to the LED animation library? Did I understand that thing that you posted the other day correctly? Um, anyway, back to this part, too, is we removed this limitation from group, but... Uh, when this PR, I guess, I guess this is probably part of the PR. When Lei Samurai, which is who worked on it, did this, I think maybe they put this back in. Oh, no, okay. So the if statement was there before Lei Samurai I just added the comment, though, that says, like, technically this isn't needed anymore. I think we can go ahead and... Um, I think we can go ahead and get rid of both the comment and the if statement, though, truthfully. Um, because what this, this, it turns out, is the thing that's actually limiting us on the number of bitmap stamps. So if we remove that, like if I go comment this out, save this, then what we see is uh, on the device, now we'll get a stamp on every point of the star. I don't know why my Pi Portal seems to always reboot twice, but whenever I save a file, it seems like I get two. 
Um, so now we get more of these stamps. We can have one on the point, uh, every point of the star, every time it turns. Yeah, I got it right. It's a component of the MIDI sequencer. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, that looks uh, that looked really cool. Um, somebody, somebody made a something like that. It was uh, not circles, like the big vector IO circles that you have. Well, I call them big, but uh, th this other one I saw it was um, almost like individual pixels, if I recall right. I get those two reboots fairly often too. Never seen a pattern. Yeah, that's the same thing for me. I've noticed it like here and there, but it's never like doesn't really prevent me from doing anything. Just like wait an extra couple of seconds. So I've never dug dug any farther into it. Um, so I think this is fine now. The comment mentions like not breaking backwards, not breaking deployed code. I don't think there is too much deployed code using this, truthfully. We could run a grep in the learn guides. That's the code we would care about the most if there's anything in there that needs changing, but um, I don't know that Turtle, I think Turtle is the kind of thing where people kind of like use it and play with it for a bit and then just kind of like write the code that draws whatever they're doing, but not necessarily like deploy it in a final project sometimes. It seems more like a sandbox just play around type of a thing. Um, and I think even if there is deployed code, I can't... I can't think of a scenario where being able to stamp extra times would actually break the deployed code. It will make it behave different as we just saw. You know, we get more stamps than we used to but I don't think I can think of a scenario where it would like crash or something because of that. Gordy G says my pipe portal double boots as well. Always assumed it was once the file saved and once when the cache flushed. That could be. Remember logo and everything growing up, but the teachers never knew how to do more than draw shapes. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun with drawing shapes, but it does, at some point you do kind of want to like all right, how do I, you know, how do I take what I've learned here and do something else with it? Shapes are fun, but that's one of the cool things, I guess, is using it to teach folks like the basic constructs of for and if and while and functions and things like that. And then they can kind of graduate beyond it. Um, so I will say we seem to be fine now. We're not having the same issue that I reported in the PR when I tested it before. Um, so we could probably go ahead and just approve and merge. It seems like whatever was causing that has gotten fixed inside the core sometimes since the time that I looked at it last. So let's, I'm going to take another quick peek through the code and then uh, just put an approve that says I tested it again and it seems to be doing what it's supposed to now. And then I think we'll make a an extra follow-up PR that changes some of this, like remove this limitation, update this. Oh, there's another one of these as well. Okay. Oh, there's three of these. Okay. At least three. I guess I should stop declaring how many and start just keep counting. Okay, and then this is the new sample, which is, uh, this is what we were just testing right now. Okay. Uh, well, it's not 720, I guess. It's alpha. No, RC0 we would be now. Just copy it out of the boot out. This is not the right. No? Released today, look at that. New windows.
say, let's do it like, let's say it this way. The changes here look good to me. Changes here look good to me. Um, CP6 fallback. Actually, say by now, I think we are okay to remove the merge this I'll make a release and then I'll go make a new PR all right what are we up to here so uh, two two three was the old one and this doesn't change functionality or anything. I think when we do the next one, maybe we'll go 2.3.0. Since the functionality is changing, it's allowing you to stamp more things. Um, 2.2.4 seems good for this one, though. I haven't seen Les Samurai as much. I think they're not not very active anymore. Hope wherever they're at out there in the world though that they're doing all right. Did a lot of good. They did a lot of good work on some display IO related stuff, so really appreciated all of their contributions. All right, two two four. I'll keep an eye on this as well. One risk when we have uh, PRs that are a couple of months old like that, sometimes it shows as passing, like you, you saw it on the screen a minute ago there, it showed the actions were passing, but um, maybe in the time between when it ran and now, some other stuff could change, and then it could cause this to, uh, to actually fail when we merge it. So we'll keep an eye on that, and if... Uh, You know, if it fails, then we'll work that into our um, new PR as well. Carol the robot. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. Additional programming language.
Okay, so it's kind of like using the turtle, but with also just a touch more functionality, like it's knowing when it walks on top of this thing, it sounds like. We go here, pick up the beeper, turn again, put the beeper back. Interesting. Hi, Charm. I wonder if uh, there's more, I wonder if there's any functionality beyond picking up the beeper and putting it down. And then I guess, I assume the walls. I assume the walls were not allowed to walk into. So if we actually did, oh, I can't edit this. Hmm. All right. Let me go back. If I just go left, move. Ah, yeah, blocked. Okay, so we can't walk through the walls. So the walls and the beepers are kind of like two things that... Two pieces of functionality that the turtle doesn't have that this thing does. I guess the, the larger grid as well. The turtle just moves by pixels. But this has a larger grid of... Really, I mean, we could implement this. Yeah, really, I would probably... I think we might not even need the turtle. I, I get why this is related to the turtle library, because it's a very similar type of control. Um, in CircuitPython land, though, we could actually do this with tile grids. This is a very similar, very similar type of thing as tile map game. Because, like, we have a 2D grid, we have a character that we can move around, we have things that block us, we have things that we pick up. Neat. This might be a fun project to do. Never know what kind of cool stuff you find randomly in old issues. Okay, so this is gone now, right? Yeah. Did we ever pass? Ooh, still going. Okay. Let's go ahead and start working on the next PR, I think. I'll make a new branch. Uh, let's go... Back to turtle. Um, a shade of fruit. I'll update main. Get checkout dash b remove cp six callback. Um, from Adafruit main, no track. Oh, let me catch up on the chat here. Oh, the teachers want to do more than draw shapes and logo. You could just use basic. The purpose of logo is to make the graphics easy. Do I want a pre-build of decompress? Got the streams working. Nice. Heck yeah. Not sure if if I'm working on it today. Uh, yeah. If you have a build, I'd be I'd be happy to dive into that stuff today. I can uh, if you're on a branch too. I can try building it on my end. Um, either way, if you want to share a UF two 
or if you share a branch link, uh, I can I can check out there. Saying I agree with them, but I understand the mentality. I guess the only advantage of this over tile grids would be the movement on angles. Oh, that's definitely true. Yeah, if uh, if we needed to move like at a forty-five, or take like half steps, um, then. The turtle is a lot nicer because you can turn by an arbitrary angle. You can just turn by 45 or um, you don't always have to do 90s. You could even turn by like three, three degrees if you want, I think. Um, push it to my fork if you want a UF2. Uh, let's see. I'll be on a, I'll be on a TFT Feather ST, S2. I'll try to build it, though. I'm interested to try and build it. Uh, I'm trying to get... I'm trying to kind of get my core muscles flexed a little bit more. Uh, I don't spend too much time working on building in the core and doing stuff in there. Um, so I'm trying to get a little more practice. So I'm happy to try and build it. 45 is trivial, but 30 is not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Go back to here. And let's go ahead and do these two things. So I think we can just get rid of this. Basically, we'll always just make a new thing and add it. Which again, eventually we'll run out of memory. Especially if you put this like in a well true. But you have a fair amount of memory, so you can go pretty far. Pixel shader is here. Up into the tunes here. Uh, so we don't need the comment anymore either. Oh, I guess I shouldn't copy this one though. Two. Anymore? Nope. That was all of them. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to take the edited library. Um, I'm going to run pre commit first. Okay, I have extra files that are not checked in, but reuse doesn't know how to ignore them. It's fine though. They're not actually in the repo, so they're not going to get pushed, so it's not going to fail in GitHub. Copy the library. Taking it to the Pi portal. Oh, that uh, middle one is different. Yeah, I copy pasted something wrong. Okay, so this is turtle ODB. Turtle ODB dot pixel shader. That makes sense. This one is just ODB, ODB pixel shader. BG pick, I don't think we're using BG pick. Stamp. Get rid of the add-on group. 
Turtle ODB. Hmm. Oh, I guess ultimately we could probably get rid of this too. Maybe. I guess that's not what it's checking though. Yeah, I don't know. Turtle ODB use? I don't know where. We have to search. That is weird. I don't know why. It seems like we got all of those right, but I wonder why the middle thing changed. This one back? No, it still does that. Easy. If turtle pick is none. Maybe turtle pick starts as none. What does the actual code say? Okay. Make a turtle. Icon images here. Turtle BG pick. We are using BG pick. You pick icon. Change turtle icon. Set up a star size. In color blue. Word by star size. So, is this stamp? Okay, yeah, this stamp is responsible for all the ones on the points, but not the center one. I guess this? Yeah. EG pick. Okay. I uh, have to run in a few minutes. It's PR 6069. It says a draft. So left to finish the documentation. You should be able to pull and build it. For now, you Zlib is on by default, but we'll probably turn it off. Yep, that makes sense. If you look in tests, there's some Uzlib tests showing it too. So it's awesome. That is super cool. Thank you so much for working on that, Mark. I will definitely take a look once we get uh, this PR squared away. Um, yeah, fractals are pretty fun. I never learned a lot mathematically about fractals, but certainly fun to, like, make programs that draw them. So did we get the wrong... So we... Oh, it's closing it. Yeah, see, this is one thing... I don't like about context processors. Pilot likes to complain about if this... Actually, wait a minute. We don't even... I, I, well, yeah. Context, context processors rant aside, we don't actually need to do this anymore. We don't need to open the file. We can actually just pass it as a file name. Uh, but where context processors like Pylint will complain if you don't use a context processor with code like this. Like if you had, um, let's say if our code was, comment this, let's say if our code was um, self dot underscore BG pick equals open pick name RB, yeah, 
just that, and then ODB equals displayo.ondiskbitmap. It's just this same line right here. And then like, if we ran pylint on this, it will complain because it will say like, we should have used a context processor to open this file. The problem is when we do use the context processor, it gets closed as soon as we leave the scope. So we have with open this thing as this thing, the only statement that's inside of it that's indented in underneath it is this one. So this executes. And then as soon as this returns, as soon as we get to right here, when we're executing, this file gets closed, which actually makes this no longer work. Because on this bitmap assumes the file is going to remain open so that it can, I guess, grab the data from it. I don't actually know what it does under the hood. Um, but it needs the file to stay open even while it's in use. Like after this gets created, it still needs to stay open in order to show it on the screen. Um, this weird a little bit that it worked before. I guess this somehow also ties to the pixel shader. Previously it was doing this differently and I guess it was ending up with a different palette or something. I don't know exactly. I do think the real fix though is we can, um, this can just be pick name now. Pick name. We don't need to open it. We don't need to do anything else. We can just pass it a string, which is the file name. Okay. And then I think also I turned it off, right? Because I commented out BG pick. There we go. I think I undid one of the pixel shader changes, so let's find that and redo it and make sure it still works. Here we go, let's put this back. This is the wrong repo. Okay, we're in pre-commit again. And as long as we only fail for reuse, then we're fine. Yep. Uh, let's just check the docs. Looks good. Uh, all right, push this. I'm gonna double check our changes again real fast. We remove that restriction and the comment that goes with it. We change this to the new way, pixel shader. We change this to the new way of loading on disk bitmap and of accessing the pixel shader. And we change this to the new way of accessing pixel shader.
Alright, so we want to push this to Foamy Guy. Whoops. Uh, this is a different thing, but I might as well do a request for viewers while I'm here. Okay. Here. Looks like we passed. Yeah. Compatibility, pixel shaders, CP6, compatibility, code. Let's make sure there's no other places where we're opening files actually while we're here. Because if we have open, to make on disk bitmaps, we should always be using the new way. So we should always be giving it just a file name. Yeah, okay, actually we do have another one where we're not. source. This has got some other stuff going on here. Hmm. What is this in? Change turtle. Yeah, see here, this one, they put the pilot disable because it complained about not using with, but it probably had the same problem. Unless, like, this whole class was somehow inside the with, then it wouldn't work. I find with context doesn't work very well with classes, because, like, if you have a function that you need to open a file and then do something with, but it needs to stay open, then, like, there's not a good place to put the with processor. I don't know if you can do like a whole class inside of it or something. Maybe there's a syntax that I'm not familiar with. Like if you need your file to remain open across multiple function calls, you're kind of can't really use with. Um, I don't know what the intended way to do that is, but. So I think that um, we should be able to just never open this file. A bunch of stuff happens if source is none. We don't care about too much of that. That's just setting different things to none. If it's a string, It's a tile grid. So when it's a string, we should... Visible equals self dot invisible. Turtle pick is not none. 
Turtle group exists, then remove turtle alt sprite, set it to none, set ODB to none, if not instance turtle pick tuple. This we would not need anymore. Not sure what other consequences it would have. Wonder what happens if you call close on a thing that's not open. So honestly, I think we just Does the Andus bitmap have a way to close? I guess just when it gets garbage collected, it will close? Never really thought about how the file does end up getting closed. I think we just don't need ODB file, and this can actually be source. I don't know... I don't know why there's like a blanket except. Especially it's just re-raising anyway. Hmm. I guess because it was closing the file. Do we need to do that anymore? We're no longer opening the file. Just return success. Okay. This is where we changed before, I think. Tempted, I don't know, partially tempted to leave these, and partially tempted to go through and delete them. Going through and deleting them is winning out right now. There's probably more stuff that could end up getting removed, truthfully. Because really, we don't manage any of this stuff anymore. I don't think we need to. But if it does not actually raise an error, then we could keep it and it's not a problem. But we may as well do some cleanup as well. Yeah. One thing we should test is change stamp or whatever that one was. I don't think this is actually calling that yet. Or does it? Does it call it at the beginning there? It does actually change turtle. Okay. Um, we didn't try clear stamp. Let's do stamps is a list stamp IDs. 
interesting it. List uh, pinned. And this returns an ID, I think. And then um, That's going to remove. Oh. Yeah, uh, I didn't actually do anything. Uh, turtle, clear stamp. So this should make it so there's not more than 10, but I, yeah, deletes the new ones. Really, I wanted to delete the old ones, which means, I should add to the beginning if I can. How do you append to the beginning of a list? Insert. Uh, I didn't even look. Was it index first or second? Oh. Real signature unknown. Well, that's not helpful. Index first. Zero. Prepend. Yeah, prepend would be nice. I think it doesn't uh, doesn't have one. There we go. So now it's always removing the oldest one, which is kind of a neat effect. So this tells us that clear stamp works. Let me do. <clears throat> excuse me. Let me do one more test. Uh, changing. I think, do I have like something else I could change to? These are kind of big, I think, for what we need. Oh, all the rest of my icons are gone, actually. Maybe some are still in the trash thing. Oh, nope, doesn't look like it. Okay, well, we'll use one of these. Purple images, purple oval. Let's also just say... Say, um... Okay, let's do... Let's do this. Iterations. Zero. Iterations plus plus. No, that doesn't exist, right? Plus equals. Um, and now if let's do iterations. Is even then turtle. Change turtle. Source slash. Images. Oval. Else. Click on. Ooh. I feel like my errors are not showing on the screen very well lately. Like it's getting too many enters or something. 
Too many new lines. I don't know. Uh, images. Oh, well, this is because that is a BMP file. There we go. Uh, so it's way bigger, obviously, and it draws really slow, and it's weird looking. But it does prove that changing pins is working, and stamps. Uh, not changing pins, but rather changing stamps. So, yeah. Not a super practical one, but it does show that it's working. So what are we looking at on changes here? Got rid of closing when we call clear stamp. Got rid of closing the BG pick. Change this one to not be opening the file anymore and instead just giving it to on disk bitmap. Also removed the closing of that file in three different places, just depending because like when different stuff got called, it closed differently. Uh, and those are our changes. Okay. With the now artificial limit on the number of things in the add-on group. Turtle BG train BG pick Turtle tur Turple Turtle 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 BG pick change stamp change turtle Turtle Two O R C Zero. We should, I guess, maybe also do another couple sanity checks here. Let's just run a few more of these. I think all of our changes are relating to, like, using um, the stamp, the, like, having a bitmap. And I think the, a lot of the rest of these don't use bitmaps, but we should make sure that nothing else broke. So speaking of uh, fractals from earlier... We got our triangle one here. Is it Serpinski? I think this one. Um, I don't know which one I actually copied. Oh yeah, yeah, Serpinski. Overlaid Coke. Just hit a couple of these. Fun to look at, and we should uh, just double check again that we're not breaking anything that worked previously. Hmm. That one doesn't do much. Flick one eighty. Little right one twenty. Hmm.
Interesting. Upside. Hmm. I don't. Um, I have to probably read up a little bit on lambdas. I don't know exactly how this is working. It's basically like declaring a dynamic version of the f function op length number of generations zero op side. You know nothing in here though uh well side is also a lambda of f hmm yeah I don't follow necessarily how that's working. You know what I do see though is like, well, we have pen down here. Hmm. Pen color? Generation color. come from this, so red, blue, and then green. I don't know, maybe that little box was it? It does have this. I don't actually know what this one's supposed to do. Overlaid Coke. Ooh, that's fun. This makes me want to hook it up to color wheel and have it uh, generate different colors for each one or whatever. Make it like rainbow. Sounds pretty cool. Alright, I'll do one more. Uh, Hilbert. This is another one with a bunch of lambdas. Whoops. Oh, it's like a maze. That's fun. Neat. Okay, uh, seems to be okay. I don't know, that one, I'm not sure if that one is working right, but I also don't know what it's supposed to be doing and is drawing something. Um, let's see. I think it's uh, not showing the second commit here. Why there aren't as many changes as what we actually have now. And now we have it, the closed stuff that got added in the next commit. Hilbert cubes, yeah. Mark said 6069, I think. Yep. Yeah. 
Okay. Let's go. Oops, this is not what we want. Update main. Not that it actually matters, but Right. My wife went to this uh, little shop that does, I guess, like arts and crafts and consignments and stuff. Is it a, is it a, it's a record store, maybe? I'm not actually sure the exact place it's at. But she's there today with some bags that she made. Trying to sell some uh, different, like, purses and fanny packs and other bags and stuff that she, that she made. She sent me some pictures of the uh, little table that she's got set up. Um, alright. So, let's see, we're not on, oh, it's not letting me check out. Because I think I have changes to this. Hmm. But now, much better. Um. What is it? Make fetch submodules? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Still have this. I need to just clone. I just need to get a fresh copy repo, honestly. I'm scared to delete this, but I think it's old and no longer used, so it's probably fine if I delete it, but I just know as soon as I do it, Everything is going to be broken. Is it devices? Oh. Okay, I went to the wrong one. I think that's because I didn't do the setup stuff, like export or whatever. There's um,
Yeah. Source to not executed. While that's building, let's also start looking into tests. Like Mark said, there's samples that show although I don't know where they're at. Zulib. EXT mod. How did I think? Maybe Mark actually said that. I don't remember. UV. A lot of this is just taking raw byte strings and pressing it. Oh, okay, I see how this works. Unpacked, packed, so each one of these is a tuple with two two parts. First one is unpacked and the second one is packed. So you can see when you don't have very much data, the packed version is actually bigger. But eventually when you have more data, then the packed version will be smaller, I assume. Although all of these do look longer, but it also depends like Maybe these bytes mean different things. I don't really know. Deflate a stream. Okay, so decompress just takes a byte stream. I don't know what this would be. Negative 15? Buffer size? Or W bits? W bits, I guess. Window buffer size for the container format. Initial output buffer size. This should error. Okay, that tells us how to run decompress at least. Uh, looks like we got a build. Let me switch to the feather.
Uh, well. Alright, so we're gonna go there. We're gonna go to bootletter mode. Alright, it's so they're very tiny buttons. Got it. What's this? I guess that's what I open that to look for stuff that's using turtle. I don't think I ever actually did. Run that check in a minute here. Uh, CP firmware UF2 media. T Gizmo Turtle Graphics. It's like one guide. A good chunk of uh, examples. I'll stop my Gizmo and test it out. To find it though. Uh, this copied, so we're good now. Back up. So, should be able to go Yeah. Sweet. Okay. So, I think I have Yeah. So, this is the code we actually started with where we're pulling this data from the Government site. We had started trying to print it, well, parse it as JSON. This is when we realized that it was actually Z lip, uh, Z, uh, G zipped, rather. G zip main. Hmm. It's like I accidentally typed an S. Okay, so I think we don't start with, I think we don't, I'm going to try it without the stream first. The content is a stream. I don't know if that's going to work. All right, let's give that a try. Value error minus three. Fifty one, which was on the decompress line. Hmm. Let's 
So this one does not pass that other value. But a lot of these do have this minus 15. Valid block type. Does this raise the same thing? I could have put this in a thing by itself. Now we gotta wait for it to fetch, but... It is the same thing. Okay, so maybe we need that minus 15. I wonder if that's... I wonder how standard that is, if that's like... Everyone always needs minus 15? It depends on the data somehow. Still got value error. Hmm. Let's do some Let's see what we actually have. Should fail the same way, but it should print out what is actually in the variable. Screen. It's not really much happening on the screen, but oh, sometimes we just fail the request too, which is all right. Okay, that does look like our gzipped data. I remember roughly the beginning first two bytes, I think, tell us that it's gzipped. It does look like a byte string, so it's pretty similar to the kind of stuff that was being passed in this test. I feel like we were probably, we must be close. I'm gonna take all of this and put it back in here. And what I'm actually going to do is start working without the fetch. And all of this. Okay, we got our value error three, which is right where we were. So this way. Okay, uh, I gotta run to the restroom real quick, and I'll be right back. I'm gonna fill up my water as well, so I'll be back in just a minute.
And we're back. Sorry about that. So, let's see. Not being able to decompress this particular data for some reason. Let's try some of the data that's in that sample script and see if it. Uh, you didn't drink so much water, you wouldn't have to go. That's true. Yeah. It's a, it is a small price, but unfortunately, one I'm not willing to pay. So I shall keep downing the water. Um, I need to make, you know what I really need to do is make, um, no, I gotcha, I gotcha, I'm with you. Uh, I need to do, like, some, I, some streamers will have a countdown thing or whatever, like, stepping away for a minute. Um, some streamers have stuff to interact with, though. Really what I want to do is make a chatbot or something that will, that folks can, like, play with while I'm not necessarily here. And ideally, we could integrate it with, um, integrate it with CircuitPython. Like, what if I had the Pi Portal? So, so we did the the uh, Turtle project earlier. What if I had the Pi Portal loaded up with a Turtle thing running that was like taking inputs from the Twitch chat for like go forward, turn, change the pin color, then the Twitch chat uh, or or Discord chat if we can hook it up that way. Um, then the chat could control the thing and drop draw pictures um that might be kind of fun as like a streamer is a afk for a minute but stream can still do something interactive um dexter says usib uzilib decompress data w bit zero buffer size zero w bits is deflate dictionary window sized size used during decompression 8 to f 8 to 15 the dictionary size is a power of 2 of that value if it's positive the data is assumed to be a zlib stream with a zlib header otherwise if it's negative it's assumed to be a raw deflate stream so ours would be positive i think Unexpected Maker does that with lasers. Oh wow! I have not, uh, I've not caught an Unexpected Maker Maker stream. Um, do they stream on Twitch usually, or I should figure out what their thing is and follow them so I can get a get a heads up. That would be interesting. I've heard, I've heard them mention streaming before. Yeah, that's probably the one problem with leaving the chat in charge of uh, a turtle is, uh, especially Twitch chat it would probably devolve into, um, let's just say drawing amusing things. Won't go too much more into detail than amusing things, but. Um, so I think that we would need this to be positive because ours does have a header. Although I must be honest, I still don't necessarily understand what what that means exactly. Deflate dictionary window size. I mean, part of it is I don't actually know under the hood what the zip compression algorithm is doing. So like, I don't, I don't really know what the deflate dictionary is or why it would have a window size exactly. Um, we do have a header and I suspect we probably will want to be positive on, based on that doc string you posted there, because I think this is the header. I think that's what they're talking about. So maybe 15? No, same error. Just one. Of course, the other thing is, uh, so, but these are defaults, maybe. W bits, zero, buff size, zero. Doesn't take keyword arguments. I should be looking at the docs too. I bet this is where that snippet came from. Uh, docs, uzlib. Oh, this, we should get CircuitPython though. I have no idea if they're up to date or not because this was a thing that we didn't actually have. Oh, it doesn't actually say. Hmm. 
I guess MicroPython docs are where we should be looking. Where did you find that, Dexter? Curious. Response header may have a compression level. Um, that's possible. Oh, we'll have to get it from here. I guess it could be like those first couple of bytes, maybe they also contain a size or something. Of course, I don't know how you'd read it out of there if you need to. It's like chicken and egg. If you need to unzip it before you can read it, then it can't be plain text, like, or it would have to be plain text instead of zipped. There's a content length. I know what that is. It's probably unrelated. XSS. So the actual HTTP response header doesn't, but I wonder if the... I wonder if it's like... One of these things, maybe. Python 1.6 docs. Can I decompress it partially, partially to see if there's a manifest? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Decompress it, par par decompress it partially. Um, like decompress only part of it, maybe? Only the beginning part or something? Um, I wonder if my computer can tell me any more about it. Uh, well, how do I want to do this? I think let's go, let's go here. Data dot is it? You know, let me just write in it though. Yeah, actually. Touch data. Data. This is what I was trying to avoid, was having it try to associate with something. Because last time it did that, it made one of my file types kind of wonky for a while until I figured out how to fix it. Is it... See, this still thinks it's text, though. Hmm. My computer knows it's not gzip because it would have like an uh, extract. What's is it a different? Does it use a different um, extension? Gzip file extension. Gz. Um, I would do it. Not an archive. Hmm. So, 
That doesn't work for just copying the bytes in, at least. Um, it's possible, Gordy G. I don't know either, to be honest with you. I don't have too much, too much experience. We could try just like cutting half of it out or something and seeing what it does. I suspect Circuit Python will give me the same error. Python docs talk about header considerations in more detail. Is this uh, is this Python C Python or um, Circ uh, MicroPython? I wish it would just take me to where I started here. Decompress the bytes data in, decompress the bytes in data, returning a bytes object containing uncompressed. Initial size of the output buffer. the size of the history buffer or window size and what header and trailer format is expected plus 8 to plus 15 automatically determine oh maybe ours probably doesn't do that Okay. Error. Oh, it said we don't do keyword arguments though, right? So, let me go MicroPython, MicroPython clib okay it is interesting these seem like keyword arguments here maybe they're just different in circuit python okay should be the second parameter, though. Okay, let's try this. For I in range... This is 8 to 15. Um, how does that work out? I can never remember, like, inclusive or exclusive or... Okay. I guess we don't actually know if that's inclusive either. Oh, right, well. One thing is... Should be inside of here. It's failed for all of these. Build all the way zero to fifteen. Yeah, totally agreed. Is window? No. That part I do know. It's not referring to a window in the GUI. 
it's referring to a window, I guess, probably within within the array that it's using to decompress it, or maybe a window within the actual data, like a certain range of the data. Um, I don't think it's referring to anything in the GUI, though. So for the actual response.content, we might need to be using this one. Because I do think dot content is a stream, but now we just have a raw bytes string here. And I feel like we ought to be able to do that just with decompress, not with the string. Stream. Um, I wish I could get the browser to not, to not, like, do it for me. I would love to be able to get a GZ file with this data in it, and then maybe, like, my computer could tell me, like, on here, some more information about it or something. I don't know. Maybe not. Oh, didn't we figure out, like, curl? How do you use curl to download a file? Curl dash dash output some file. Um, I did, I, yeah, that's where we started from, Mark. Um, that's where I found this decompress, and I saw the examples there. I haven't actually run this one, I will say. We should try that, maybe. Uh, but I'm having trouble figuring out, I guess, how the second parameter works. I, I assume that's our problem, is our second parameter. Because every time when I try to run it, I just get, um value error three uh, right now it's it's not printing the uh, exception anymore um, yeah well there's a little bit more back a little while ago value error minus three Minus three? Is it supposed to be minus three? No. And I noticed this is the, speaking of these samples that are in the test, this is the same error. This one here says it should raise an exception. Um, and I did try this code and this does raise the same exception. Not 100% sure either. Just took the code, I did some testing using the zlib cpython library to generate compressed strings. Oh, okay. Maybe we can do it that way. Is there a metadata browser? Um, I don't know. But one thing I think we could do is download it like this, and then let's see if maybe something can tell us anything more. So we give it URL, curl URL, nope. Copy that, paste that, output, data. Hundred fifty four bytes. And I think this is what it just made.
Yeah. Okay, so we got the G-zipped one. So is there anything in here? There is not. What did we see before? Wasn't it, was it like file? File? Original size. Hmm. I don't know what that tells us. Inf. Is this UZLib here from pfalcon? Is this the one that ultimately made its way into MicroPython and then CircuitPython? Yeah, I guess so. Original UZLib. Let's try... Well, I don't know, gzip, how to find window size, gzip, find window size. I don't, I mean, I don't understand how the browser does this. The browser is able to unzip it without, I mean, I guess it's just hidden, but like, how does it know which number to use for the window size? Two fifty three. What's two fifty three? The number? This is cruel. Yeah, so I think these are the first two bytes. 1F and 8B. So we do get those as our first two bytes. I don't know, this is doing stuff with underflow. I don't read C code very well, truthful either. I don't see anything like window, window bits? Decoder error window bits. Doesn't seem to be nearly as much window going on in this file. All right, let's try it on CPython. See if we can make CPython that does it, and then from there... Well, I don't want to use gzip, though. 
Or do I? No, I want to use Zlib, because I want to use Zlib decompress. Hmm. Whoa. Incorrect header check. Okay, so maybe magic of stack overflow. Decompress object. Sixteen plus max bits. What is, is decompress object a different function though? It is, but it also takes max bits. Sixteen plus max bits. Where did they get that? What number is this? 15. Okay. There you go, 31, obviously. 31 is the number. It's just silly to think it would be anything other than 31. I don't know. But not on Circuit Python. Well, that's a bummer. Well, 16 and 15, that's definitely 31, right? Yeah. Hmm. That makes it hard. Yeah, that's true, Dexter. They are. First two bytes. 1F, 8B, they are. I wonder, is this bad? Maybe if we do without this? Nope, same. Um, do we have uzlib dot... We don't have this. Hmm. Oh. Got a bit of an earthquake there. Um.
Okay, let's, uh... Try some of these, I guess. But I mean, these are all different because they do all use this negative 15. And none of these do have the uh, first two bytes thing going on. I noticed. So maybe we have to strip the first two bytes. Use it with CircuitPython. I wish this was not using this whole patterns loop thing also, honestly. This makes it more complex than it needs to be in my opinion, but I guess it's not it's not an example, it's a test, so it wasn't really written to be non-complex. Exceptions. A bunch of those seem to work. And none of them have the headers. Minus three still. Thirty one is one F. That's true. Um, hmm. What does this look like? Ah. Oh, I just screwed it anyway. Now it's like question mark. Oh, well. Want me to open it as text? I guess let's do it. Oh, this isn't helpful because we can't see it. Plus 24 to plus 31. Oh yeah, that was on the Python page. Sixteen plus eight to fifteen uses the low four bits of the value as the window size logarithm. Input must include a gzip header and trailer. Use the low four bits as the value of the window size automatically accepts. So we don't have any numbers from zero to a hundred. Oh, but I did break this, right? Fingers crossed. I'm thinking the 40s, I guess, would have been likely, but... 0 to 100 all failed. And negative is supposed to mean that it doesn't have the header. Uh, 
I don't know, n minus 100 to positive 100. Got no successful ones. Trailer. Trailer. What is the gzip trailer? Test this one too. Think it would print the value, right? Yeah, we had print decompressed. Oh, okay. So buff size, it looks like, doesn't do anything. What is this slash? GZIP is also often used to refer to the GZIP file format, which is a 10-byte header. 10-byte header containing magic number 1F8B, the decompression method 08 for deflate 1-byte header flags, a 4-byte timestamp, compression flags, and the operating system ID. The header is 10 bytes. Oops. So the data maybe doesn't start until like here or something. Um, let's do it this way. All right. And I didn't start with zero. Probably should have, but ten colon. But I also don't know, I mean, it wouldn't be 31 anymore, probably, because it doesn't have the header, so would it be negative 31? So I should just run the for loop. Oh, okay. Okay. So it looks like Zlib on CPython can handle the header. But uzlib maybe can't, so we have to get rid of the header by taking out the first four bytes. I am actually, I'm curious, what, are there any other numbers, or is 31 literally the magic number for this?
I'm gonna do this differently so it doesn't spam as much. Thirty-one is not the not the only magic number. Didn't it, why didn't it go positive? Oh, positives fail. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So basically, we can't. Header. So you can pass any negative number as long as you remove the header. That seems to be the case. So for this, And I don't know, could we leave it off? Be nice to not declare it if any number. I, I still don't. I should probably read the deflate algorithm. I still don't really have a great grasp on what that's doing. Um, I guess I should have kept some of that. All right, moment of truth. Well, I guess if it fails, we know we have to put a negative number back. Yeah. Doesn't seem to matter which negative number. I don't know if maybe some are faster than others. I don't know what the difference would be. Yeah. All right. That works. Thank you, who was that, Dexter? Thank you, Dexter, for the idea of uh, checking into the actual full size of the header. That turns out that was the issue. We didn't remove enough, and it seems like we just can't handle the header in Uzlib. But now we know what to do. Strip it, and then use a negative W bits magic number thingy. Um, I don't know if there's like performance implications, like if one of these is faster or uses less RAM or something. It's also weird, I don't know, like, could we just always assume that negative numbers will work? I don't know. It would be weird also, I guess, if the server sent us one without a header, then we would... Well, actually, if the server sends it to us without a header, our code's not going to know that it's gzipped anyway, because we're looking at the first... Oh, no, 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 that's not true. We're not looking at the first two bytes. We're looking at the thing in the response header. Encoding type. So if the server sent us data without a header that was still gzipped, we would not need to remove the first 10 bytes which means we would break it by doing so. I don't know, we'd have to find a server that does that, I guess, to be able to test it. I don't know how we would correctly, like, try to account for that either. And request failed. Um, all right, so I think what I'll do is just uh, 
get a uh, text thing on the screen. A uh, label is the word I'm looking for. Let's put a label on the screen and then let's grab one of our data values and put it in the label, our uh, active visitors numbers. And we'll put that in the label. And then um, for now, that's probably where I will leave this. We need to figure out what other, like if we want to do this project on a mag tag or a pi portal or keep it on this feather. Um, there could be different ones, honestly, because there's a bunch of different data that comes from this source. Um, this TFT feather is really nice for showing a single value since the, stream, uh, since the screen is relatively small. So this one's perfect for active visitors. So let's do that part. Um, all right, so we don't need this. We don't need this. We do want uh, this import, no, from, let's do from, from. Adafruit display text bitmap import label doesn't really matter where we do this. I guess we'll do it first. Yeah, let's do it first so that we are covering up what's getting printed on the screen. Uh, so let's go uh, output label equals a new label. Font, um, oh, what is it? Uh, terminal, terminal IO font. X. I don't think we need to include that if it's blank, but I'll put it for now. Let's make a group, main group. We find a server that respects, yeah, that would be, that would be the most ideal, is if the server would just not return you zipped data when you asked for not zipped data. Unfortunately, this server does not care. I, I think we actually found a Stack Overflow or an old GitHub issue or something. We found a post that made it seem like it was maybe a uh, Amazon S3 thing, where like if your data is stored a certain way in there, then it just makes it always do that. Um, I have a whole lot of experience with Amazon S3, but it made it seem like maybe that was a just a fact of how the S3 behaves, and it and it turns out this government database thing lives inside of S3. Uh, this will be a group, group. Don't need anything else. We will have to import that, I guess. Display IO group. Oh boy, yeah. Let's get that. Uh, display equals board. Display. Display. Display.show main group. Actually, I'm going to do scale. See how big that is. Anchor point. I want to center it. So I'm going to go 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Anchor position. Uh, half of the display. But these are not functions. These are properties. I make the display before this. Not make it, but look it up actually. So I didn't import this. Okay. Now let's go when we get our data. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, we don't even need to bother doing this. Truthfully, we should just start by doing this since like we know the data is coming back and it's going to be in this format. I guess I'll keep this for now. If we ever want to go back to the PyFlate version. Kill some of that. All right, and then let's go uh, output label dot text equals, and where is our actual data value? Copy this, actually. So data zero active visitors. Just 
JSON data, data, zero, active visitors. Um, we never called show? We never called show. Blank lines. Oh, we don't have a while true. So it just disappeared as soon as it got done. Uh, mm. yes, uh, main group, pinned, output label. We have to actually put it in the group. We don't even need the group, I guess. We could show the text directly, but I like to always use a group. Looks like they're using Amazon Cloud Front. Request failed, that'll happen. We'll add, once this turns into like an actual guide project, we'll add a couple of uh, try catch like error handling. It'll retry a couple of times if it fails the request. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Oh, I did divide by one. I think it worked that time. It just was like mostly off the display. There it is. 284525. So right now, as of the last five minutes, there are 284,525 users active on US government websites. It's over a quarter of a million. It's quite a few. I wonder if we count as an active user for pulling this data or for having like this page open or something. Kind of semantical at the end of the day, if it counts or not, but kind of curious. Okay. So yeah, I think uh, we would probably add like a label on this, like a not a label object, but like a units or whatever. Um, Something like this. But honestly, this probably doesn't need too much more. The error handling, like I was talking about a minute ago, retrying a couple of times, uh, that'll be something to put in this. But then this version of it's probably pretty good. I think maybe we'll make one on the Pi Portal or the MagTag, one or the two. One of the two that does one of the other API endpoints that fetches a little bit more data, like which pages have the most traffic. This is just a total count of everybody across all pages, but there's also one that tells us like by page, which one has the most people or whatever. So that would be another one, but we need more room, I think on the display. Um, so the Pi Portal or the MagTag might be better for that. But maybe the guide will show both. Maybe the guide can be one on the TFT feather that does this one, ooh, which is much too big. Um, and then one on the uh, on the bigger screen that does a little bit more data. Okay, so let's actually make two labels. So that way we can have two different sizes of text. Uh, and I probably shouldn't have called this output label. Output value label.
Okay. And then let's go output label. Maybe this can be scale too. I think you can pass these in the constructor, but I always like doing them separately. I don't know why. So this one I'll do um, 0.5x, but then on y I'll do 0. 0. So we place this one from the top of the y orientation. And then we'll go still halfway. But then for this, we'll go right below the previous one. So output value label dot y. No. Dot anchor position one. And then plus just a couple of pixels. And then add that to the main group also. I think this will give us two labels, one smaller than the other, but both centered horizontally, and one a couple of pixels down from the other. Maybe we should move the top one to where it's not halfway down the screen. It should be a little bit further up now, maybe, since we're going to have two. Building a display for, what do we got here? Ota app? A spot? Oh, it's for parks? Are these, um, what are these? Are these like waypoints or something inside the park? Yeah, pota.app. Ham radio, parks on the air. Nice. That's pretty cool. Oh, we didn't get our second label. Oh, we never set the text of it. Um,. Yeah, let's do that when we get it back. Or I guess we could do it at the beginning, right? We might as well do it at the beginning. Oh, okay, and also we want this above though, right? I put this below. We actually want it above, which means we want to place it by 1.0, not 0 0.0. And this should actually be Should be it's not gonna work like that, is it? I, maybe we could just do y minus three. I think would come out pretty close. I need to be minus more than three. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty much what I was going for. But I do want uh, still a little bit more up. So actually, instead of placing it based on this one, why don't we just go, let's go back to this and let's just make this like, uh, let's do a quarter, one quarter of the display. That'll be like towards the top, and the other one will be below. It's not really directly related to the other, but I think they'll come out pretty good. Nah. Still wish it was further up, I think. I mean, we can just keep making this bigger, and then it will scoot it up, but... Probably not the best way. At some point we should just change to hard coding a pixel instead of dividing by the height. Oh, 
Looks pretty good. We might also throw like analytics.usa.gov or something. Maybe we put that real tiny down in the bottom something. Just so there's like something that says where the data came from. But otherwise, I think we're looking pretty good. We lost about 3,000 users since last time. We had 284,000. All right. Um, this is awesome. Huge thank you to... Go to Mar uh, you go to Park and make radio contacts. Interesting. So you go to the park and then from there, like you take your equipment and you connect up with somebody else who's got their equipment or something like that. I'm not big into the ham world. I don't know too much about... All the different stuff they do. It's a fascinating world, though. It's something like I would love to learn more about. Um, okay, so I have to say a huge thank you to Mark Gambler, who was here in the chat a little while ago. I'm guessing probably he's left by now. I think he mentioned ha uh, leaving. Yeah, only back for a minute. So um, huge, 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 huge thank you to Mark Gambler, who did this PR in the core, which allowed us to get the decompress function inside of circuit python um without which we would not be able to do this or we'd have to do it differently at the very least we'd have to do our decompression at the python layer like using that pyflate library we played with last time or else implementing it somewhere else so um thank you big hug reports uh to mark for doing that this gets us to the point where we can pull the data from this api uh thank you to dexter and everybody who helped troubleshoot the uh, decompressing, we got the decompressing working by taking the header off, the 10 bytes. Um, so thank you to all the folks who helped me figure that out. And yeah, I think I'm probably going to head out uh, for now. Could try to talk with as many radio operators as possible. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. So if you're in the park, if you go to like, uh, if there's elevation at all, you probably can reach more people or something. Um... So yeah, thank you to everyone who watched as well, uh, but especially thank you to those folks who helped me out in the chat. Um, I will be back next week for sure at this time, so Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Time is when I normally stream. So you can always catch me on Twitch and YouTube at this time. Uh, that was about almost three hours ago, two hours, 50 minutes ago um, today, which is Saturday. So whatever time that is in your time zone, two hours, 50 minutes ago, that's when I start streaming on Saturdays. Um, so you can follow me on Twitch if you want notifications and stuff. I oftentimes have been streaming at some point on Mondays as well, maybe in the morning or maybe the afternoon. It just depends on how the day is going. Um, so if you follow me on Twitch, you can get a notification for that if you're interested. Um, I do see we have a couple of folks on Twitch, so I'll find somebody to raid maybe real quick if we can. And I'll see if I can get a raid working. Um, we could go back to Anthony Wright's code or Tim, Tim Baudet. Tim's working on, uh, for folks that don't know on Twitch, Tim is a, a different developer who develops in the open on Twitch, which is really cool. He's one of the inspirations for me starting to stream. Uh, both him and Scott, I would say, are kind of my two biggest in, uh, inspirations for streaming. So we'll go raid Tim right now. He's working on uh, new maps, new content for his um game called accelerate where you drive a car that has like a bucket on the top and there's an egg in the bucket and you have to try to keep your egg from flying out and uh busting all over the ground so it's like a mix between a racing game and the old school like egg spoon races if you ever played that thing as a kid um that's kind of how the game works so we'll raid tim uh i don't know not super used to doing raids. Let's see if I figure it out. But anyway, thank you to everyone, and I'll catch you all uh, later. G3 Holiday, Dexter, Seagrover, thanks to all you folks, and we'll catch you next time. Let's see if I can figure out the stream here. So raid, pick a channel, pick a channel. That's the one. Yep, start raid. Here we go. Don't know exactly when it cuts out, but we should be heading over there. Uh, in just a, just a moment. So stick around and watch Tim if you want. Otherwise, uh, see you later. Hope everyone has a good weekend.